Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God to you, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest part of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young and the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied by my bounty, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started on their return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among the relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. 
He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of all people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. We don't always get to celebrate two Sundays after Christmas. We only have 11 days after Christmas to work in two Sundays before Epiphany. Whenever we do get to this second Sunday, we have a choice, a choice of three gospel lessons. We have this wonderful story we've just heard of Jesus in the temple with his teachers. The only story in our gospel about Jesus in the time between his infancy and his baptism. Another choice for this Sunday is the story of Joseph's heeding a dream and fleeing by night to Egypt with Mary and the infant Jesus to escape King Herod's massacre of the children in Bethlehem as he looks for the new king of the Jews. The family then remains in a foreign land as refugees until the danger is over and they can return to Nazareth where Jesus was raised. And then the third optional reading is the story of the visit of the Magi, which we will hear this Wednesday on Epiphany. Wise men from the East, scientists of the stars, and probably priests of the ancient religion of Iran, Zoroastrianism. Following a star they now believe signals the birth of the new king of the Jews. They find their way to the manger, where they are welcomed in a beautiful scene of mutual regard across cultural, racial, and religious boundaries. But their protocol visit to the reigning King Herod produced unintended consequences that led to the family's emigration to Egypt and the subsequent infanticide. So what I'd like to do this morning is go through these same three stories in that same backward chronology, starting with the gospel we read today about the 12-year-old Jesus in the temple. It is the Passover, and the family of Joseph and Mary have traveled from Nazareth in the northern province of Galilee to Jerusalem to celebrate and observe the great Passover event. They probably traveled with a great contingent from their own village and the neighboring villages to join this huge celebration. Luke says that Jesus was 12 years old. Now that's an important point. That is the point of life where a young person was expected to take responsibility for their own receiving and their own understanding of the law. Much of that formation process takes place in a format of questions and answers with the teachers of the law. The young person would be questioned on his competency, and it was, it was expected that the student would form questions for the teachers, both to demonstrate proficiency and also to deepen understanding. 
In later years, this process became formalized in what is today is the bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah. It is a right of full-fledged adult membership in the Jewish community. Now, in our story, Jesus is with his family and with the villagers in Jerusalem. And at the end of the Passover, they leave, and it takes a day for the travelers to realize that Jesus is not with the crowd returning home. Now, that maybe is not as unusual as we might think. The adults in this huge party visiting together, the young people free range among the relatives and friends. As the group then senses his loss, and part of the group returns to Jerusalem to find him. Luke tells us it took three days. My guess is that this is a bit of writer's license, connecting the disappearance in Jerusalem with Jesus' three days in the tomb. And I hear Jesus' response to his anxious parents as a respectful one. Beloved parents, you know that you have prepared and formed me. You have prepared me for my responsibilities and role as an adult in this community. I must take my place in my father's house. It was common for Jews to speak at the temple as the house of our father. And then it closes. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. His parents have done their job well, Jesus now can fulfill his potential. I think this story reminds us of our responsibilities toward all children. It is our job as adults to make sure every child grows into their full potential. And it is work not just for parents alone, but for the community. As a society, we have a responsibility to ensure that every mother is healthy as she nurtures her child, that every child has nurturous food and nurturing shelter and access to health care, that every child has educational and spiritual opportunities to get off to a good start in order to live into their full potential. It takes a village and it takes a society to raise a child. We work hard here to be part of that at St. Paul's. We love our children. Our corporate prayer and our corporate resolution should be that every one of God's children upon earth has the opportunity to increase in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. But that is not easy to accomplish. It is a dangerous and risky world, an unfair world. Jesus nearly did not get to this day in the temple. Jesus was one of those at-risk children, at risk of violence. Like so many others, he was vulnerable to the whims of the powerful and to the threats of violence. But his father Joseph, listening to his deepest intuition, acted decisively and led his family to safety. They became refugees. Thank God for Egypt. How many countries today would have turned them back at the border? I'm struck by Joseph. It takes a lot to persuade any family to leave its home to abandon the language, the culture, the history and sense of place that has been its grounding, maybe for generations. Joseph did so on the strength of a dream, following his intuition, before he had any concrete external evidence. And it was a life-saving decision. But I wonder, are there many countries today that would honor such an immigrant's request for legal entry? And I wonder, wouldn't a desperate father protecting his child and wife make some entry legal or illegal? Herod's violence against the children in Bethlehem was low-key, low-key enough that no evidence about it remains except this story from Luke. 
I think about the Holy Family. Whenever I hear about families fleeing their homes, seeking welcome in a safer, more promising place. And I'm also struck by the unintended consequences of the well-meaning actions of the wise men. Privileged and resourced, they follow their reasoning into a foreign place where they don't really know the lay of the land. They make use of their access to the seat of power to have their audience with Herod. They think they are helping. They think they're doing what is right and good, but they wreak a tra tragic violence upon the poor and vulnerable in Bethlehem. The story of the three wise men is a story of such ambiguity, the gentle scene at the manger, symbolizing the peace and respect that can exist across cultures and classes and races. The fascinating picture of obvious power and hidden power, finding synergy in the humble place. The recognition that the truth of the sages and scientists from any realm or any discipline will ultimately guide any truth seeker toward the revelation of God, who is truth itself and those good intentions, which turn tragic. Well, we have rich fare on this second Sunday of Christmas. The joyful wise men from the East offering their gifts to the child in the humble place. The threat to that child and the escape into Egypt thanks to an intuitive, protective father. The child's nurture into adulthood with all his potential and possibility intact still. The story of Jesus is essentially the story of God's most intimate entry into our humanity. It makes us want to treasure each of our children, to honor them and give them gifts. It makes us want to protect all of our children, to keep all children safe and secure from violence and threat. It makes us want to rejoice at their growth and to give them opportunities to live into their fullest potential. And it makes us glad for the young adults in our midst, increasing in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. We adults, we are Joseph and Mary in our generations. It is our duty to see the Christ child in every child and to do our part to love, protect, and to form them to their fullest potential. During communion, we will sing a lovely Christmas carol and its first and last verses seem a fitting ending. Love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine. Love was born at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sign. Love shall be our token. Love be yours, love be mine. Love to God and neighbor. Love for plea and gift and sign. In the name of God. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker.
Guide your people into your deeper presence, O Holy One, that we may increase in wisdom and years and in divine and human favor as we pray, saying, Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Gracious one, you have blessed the church with every spiritual blessing from the heavenly places and chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Lead us, your children, into holiness according to the good pleasure of your will and to the praise of your glorious grace freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Larry, and our seminarian Joshua. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's Camden and Larry May's retired bishop. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Lead your people into your wisdom and guide those who teach and who rule among the nations that we may work together to create a world of peace where all people may live into the fullness of their potential. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Guide those who search for truth and insight that they may labor to bring forth new hope through a constant rebirth of wisdom and knowledge. We pray for justice and peace in Arkansas, America, and around the world, especially for people in the Nuba Mountains, Sudan, Somalia, Central African Republic, Congo, Nigeria, and refugees everywhere. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Protect all children and families and rescue them from violence, abuse, poverty, and oppression. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Inspire our community to be a place of nurturing peace, that all children may live lives of fullness and security, developing their gifts for the healing and blessing of the world. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Save your people and give ear to our prayer as we remember before you those for whom we are called to pray. We pray especially for Bill Fitch, Isabella and Tony Cabrera, I'm sorry, Isabella Cabrera, Tori Johnson, Shannon Herrett, Pam Sarnot, Kay and Carl Klossner, R and J, Jeff Collins, Chris and Tony Souter, Carolyn Banks, Brant Croxdale, John Schult. We also pray for others whom we now name aloud or in our hearts. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Hear our gratitude as we sing aloud with radiance over the grain, the wine, and the oil, over the young of the flock and the herd, over the goodness of God as we pray for our thanksgivings. We offer our thanksgivings for our church, our children, the new year, and for all thanksgivings we offer aloud or in our hearts. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. We remember those who have died, especially Sister Cabrini Schmitz, Chase Moreland, Craig Strickland, Comfort Bellow, Michael Pritchard, Carl Naylor, 
and Dale Bumpers. And we pray for all those who have died whom we now name aloud or in our hearts. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Gracious Father, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation as we come to know Christ, so that with eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know what is the hope to which you have called us and what are the riches of your glorious inheritance among the saints and what is the immeasurable greatness of your power for us who believe through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I don't know about you, we have not taken our tree down. It's still Christmas. The 12, what day is this, Charlie? Tenth. tenth day of Christmas. Happy tenth day of Christmas. Right after this service, um, our new inquirers class begins um, in the parish hall, the south side of the parish hall. We will be using your faith, your life as our text an invitation to the Episcopal Church. Inquirer's class is a basic in introduction to the Episcopal Church and to St. Paul's. Welcome anyone who'd like to be part of that. Come to the south part of the parish hall right after church. This is the first time we've done this during the uh, Sunday morning formation hour, and uh, I'm excited to have an opportunity to do so. Also during the 10 o'clock hour, we have uh, our practicing presence group in the library, they start with 20 minutes of silence. Our families and, child and children support group in the green room across from the nursery. And then in the north part of the parish hall, Suzanne will be taking my class and teaching a form of prayer, a personal devotion to that group. So please stick around right after church. You can have breakfast during classes in the parish hall. Wednesday is the Feast of the Epiphany. We will have a service at 10 o'clock here in the chancel. We'll also have a service at 6.15 here in the church. Note that those of you who are regular Wednesday church people will be in the church rather than in the parish hall for this Epiphany Eucharist. And we will be serving our usual Wednesday supper, 5.15 to 6 o'clock in the parish hall and kitchen. Next Sunday is the Feast of the Baptism. So if you would like to prepare for baptism or have a child to prepare, please get in touch with the clergy right away. This Tuesday, Theology on Tap gathers together. We are reading one of my favorite books, Simply Sane, The Spirituality of Mental Health by the late Dr. Gerald May. We'll be discussing particularly chapters 9, 10, and 11. Uh, if you haven't been part of the group, you can pick right up. It's one of those books that you can start in the middle and it works just fine. Um, 
Pick one up in the bookstore and join us this Tuesday night, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, 6 to 8, um, at Amelia's Mediterranean Restaurant on Dixon Street. PFLAC will be getting together tomorrow night. Parishioners John Barry and Richard Anderson will talk about their life together. They've been together for 17 years. And John, as a senior management uh, person at Walmart, will talk about what it's meant to enjoy their protection through the non-discriminatory policies at Walmart. That will be tomorrow night, 6.30 at St. Thomas Springdale, our PFLAG group. You heard in our prayers the petition for the Nuba Mountains where there is a terrible genocide happening. Friend of the parish and, uh, and husband of parishioner Kathleen Barta Sam Totten will be going there right away. We will be sending money to help support that mission, taking food to people who are starving in the Nuba Mountains. It's a dangerous mission. If you would like to contribute to that, please make a check to St. Paul's and just put Sam Totten or Nuba Mountains, a clue to us, and we'll make sure that that gets to the support of that um, uh, very brave and courageous work that Sam is undertaking. In our epistle today, you'll note the announcement about the Saging Group on the second Wednesday. Also, you'll see the sign-up email for Dinners for Eight later this month, a great way to meet new people. You'll see also that on the 23rd, we're hosting Burns Night for our Scottish Heritage. You've got a phone number for Red Sisson for tickets, and it does sell out, so um, be quick about it. And we are soon to take book donations for our annual CPC book sale. Those donations are on the 16th if you want to start organizing your books uh, this week. Uh, the sale, the book sale, will be January 30th and Sunday. Uh, that's a Saturday and Sunday the 31st. And I preached about, oh, those young adults that we are so proud of. It's great to have Amanda Agana back from the Naval Academy visiting home on the semester break. Good to see you, dear. At the end of the service, feel free to take poinsettias from the parish hall. We have a lot of poinsettias. We'd love for them to continue to be enjoyed, so um, uh, make yourself uh, at home in the parish hall for those flowers. The last hymn is printed incorrectly in the bulletin. It is correct on the uh, two boards. It's hymn 109. Today is the first Sunday of January. It's our custom to offer um, a birthday or an anniversary blessing for those who celebrate birthdays or anniversaries in January to do so on this first week, first Sunday. So if January is your day, please come forward. Please stand, if you will. First, we'll pray for January birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And for anniversaries. Loving God, in the mystery of the Holy Trinity, you reveal yourself as a community of self-giving love. We thank you for bringing us together into families. Bless, we pray, these couples who celebrate the anniversaries of their commitments to one another and grant that they may grow in grace, fidelity, and mutual affection all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Congratulations. Forty years for the Clarks. Today. Wonderful. Happy birthday today. How good. Please be seated for just a moment. If you are visiting today, we are so glad you're here. We'd love to welcome you and to 
acknowledge your presence by offering you a gift as our ushers come down the aisle with the welcome bags. Please get their attention and uh, let us give you one of these as a way of saying thank you for being here. We're honored by your presence. If you're new to St. Paul's or to Fayetteville, uh, one way to get acquainted with our congregation is right after the service in Suzanne's office. Uh, that's the first office next to the bookstore, and we call that Let's Get Acquainted. Whoever you are or wherever you are in your pilgrimage of faith, you're welcome in this place. You are welcome at God's table. This Eucharist is offered the glory of Almighty God with a special intention for all children throughout the world. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up. 
your hands. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you send him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him 
being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Paul and Martin, Mary and Joseph, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the red of heaven.
In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go, Lois Coolidge and Erling Dixon, may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, body, because we all share share one bread, one one cup. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God enlighten the eyes of your heart that you may know the hope to which Christ has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us. May Christ give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to share the divine life of the one who humbled himself to share our humanity. May the Holy Spirit, who has chosen you to be adopted as God's children, set your heart on the pilgrim's way and lead you in a straight path to which you shall not stumble. And the blessing of our wonderful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
my favorite Christmas carol, the first Lowell. Lowell, Lowell. Oh, never mind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.